one, even in my head, and maybe that's because I come from uh, first generation and um, kind of fir- first generation immigrants to America. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad's dad moved here. My mom moved here. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad was the first of family ever and first of six sisters to go to college. Same with my mom. It's probably the first one ever <laughs> in her family to go to college, to get a degree, things of this nature. It, it never really crossed my mind what an entrepreneur is. Mm. Um, I knew people had businesses. My best friend growing up, Justin, you met one mm-hmm. time. His family owned a business or two. So I knew it was a thing, but mm-hmm. it doesn't cross my mind, let alone through the internet, which I remember the first time getting on the internet, actually the SAC Public Library, which is right down <laughs> here. Uh, and I just still didn't know what it was. I was probably six, and I'm playing some dumb game that yep. could have played, played without the internet, but yeah. I thought I was on the internet, yeah. and it was cool. Uh, things of this nature, YouTube, um, Instagram, uh, podcasting mm-hmm. uh, are now viable uh, forms of career if you mm-hmm. can do them well. Um, some of us, Omar, even b- actually probably Jim and Omar, uh, probably similar time diving into the world of creating content on the internet. Me, probably five, six years later, uh, but still even in my career is now probably o- o- almost a decade old. Um, so your guys is over 10 years old building a career on the internet. And it's still growing, right? Instagram's um, under 10 years old. YouTube's a little bit over 10 years. Podcasting's really hitting a stride. I'd almost say this year. Now everyone's yeah, catching on to the vibe. Every year everybody says you're this year. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, but this year it's catching a stride. We've done it for numerous years, five, six o- years. Over five years, yeah. Yeah. Um, Snapchat was, was a, a breeze in the wind of, of building mo- a career and making money. Twitch is a viable option now for many what do you think the ch- what one what one what does it take two what do you think the chances are now as kids are watching the Logan Pauls and whatever and saying I want to be a vlogger for a living mom yeah um in a, in a realistic chance you know in, in my head is in my head now for fitness Mike or just a career in social I say, media I say saying? any of it I say okay. any of yeah. it um we could talk about where fitness stands um and then two uh, in my head now when I first started I didn't even think Jim said you want to be on a podcast I said. No idea, sure. Uh, and then another day, like a week later, Jim said, "Hey, I'm going to film your warm up. You want to talk about it or something?" I said, "Right, okay, yeah. sure." And then that, and then what I do for a living was born. Uh, otherwise, I was training people in person. Yeah. Um, and luckily for me, I've, I've been very blessed with luck, uh, friends, uh, companions, co-hosts to help me build that career. But uh, if you started now, mm-hmm. in my head, it's the same as almost going to the NBA. Like the percent to be Good enough, enough eyes on you, plus the luck, plus the support, yeah. plus the grind with... In sports, it's different because you play high school and you're not supposed to make money, and you can play college and you're not supposed to make mm-hmm. money, so you kind of have 21 years of of free ride to hone your craft. Mm-hmm. Um, and nowadays, you need that support. Say you start vlogging at 18. It may take 10 years before your channel takes off. Yeah. Uh, so in regards to all of that, that's I, I consider it almost the same chance of going to the NBA, and I want to know your thoughts on it all. Very loaded question because I have to. It's more of a no, discussion. We have no, conversations here, no, not presentations. Li- yeah, it's very true because I. Uh, yeah, you brought up a lot of variables, so I'm gonna address a few of them. Yeah, yeah, uh, just, just hop in. Yeah, yeah. Um, so here's what I think. I actually still think, and I would maintain that today, 2019, dearly beloved, we're gathered here today to get through this thing called life. Electric word life, it means forever, and that's a mighty long time. Quoting Prince, let's go crazy. Icon. I I, I got Prince. Anyway, go on. Goddamn icon, RIP. Rest in power. But I think it, I, so my overall thesis is that it's easier today than when I started 10 years ago. So my YouTube is going to be the 10 uh, year anniversary in 2009. I think social media is easier. I think on the scale of success, however, it's pretty much the same, and here's what I mean. I think the uh, level of competition has certainly increased, but the magnitude of success has increased over time. So competition has also increased. The magnitude of success has also increased, but the opportunities have also increased. So there's multiple variables that mm-hmm. are changing, and that is hard to assess. But in 2009, to give you an example, on YouTube, there already were channels like Smosh that had a million subscribers. So YouTube was already proven to be a viable medium for mm. certain types of content, comedy, sketches, those sorts of things. Um, but fitness was not viable. The largest channel, my boy Scooby1961, I think, 
uh, he had 20,000 followers. And at that time, when I started, I was just trying to put out content for my clients, how to warm up, how to cool down. And YouTube was the only free place to do it in 2009. Cool. I'll upload it. But I began studying like anything else. I'd take an interest. I just wanted to see. I uh, took a look at who was the most popular. And no one will remember this. There's another YouTuber that had the most, like beyond Philip DeFranco, where it'd be like a girl's butt. Like that was the, the thumbnail before YouTube really put on okay. – um, not now that they have strict regulations, but it was basically the Wild West back then. I think his uh, YouTube channel was called Stand Firm, but he was another big mm, player okay. for a time, 2009. Anyways, Scooby uh, was the largest channel, and he had 20,000 subscribers. So that right there tells you that making a living off of YouTube was pretty much not viable. So if the largest person on social media 10 years ago only had 20,000 followers on YouTube, was it easier to succeed then? Well, easier in what sense? There's probably less competition, but if you're the top dog, you're still not making a lot of money. And probably less overall eyes watching oh, yeah. the content. Yeah. So that's that's it's one of those things that is more good content creators, and I'll use the analogy talking about informative, in quotations, fitness content, which has really only existed in the last like six to seven years, has grown uh, considerably over those last six to seven years because it's a force multiplier. As more people enter it, then people have a reason to check it out. The mm -hmm. analogy I can use it's kind of like cable it's kind of like hbo it's any of these shows you can have with hbo game of thrones that we're talking about that's one show so that's the one channel where shit i want to check out that channel and then people are going to talk about that you're going to get referrals and then you you need to get hbo you need to get that service mm -hmm. provider you need to get on youtube to watch that fitness content or it could happen more like how it kind of happened, which is Netflix, where there's, oh, this guy puts out pretty good content. This girl over here is putting out pretty uh, good content. And over time, a community that's not united, the individuals aren't united with each other, but that category becomes more popular. Now it does better in search rankings. So this is a process that happened over years and years and years. But as that process happens, it's like any other medium where – your skill needs to increase and the amount of requisite things you have to get right go up. So opportunities increase. Now it is possible there is someone out there right now that can create a channel and that channel can reach a million subscribers in fitness. I'm convinced of that. And they could do it inside of three years. In 2009, I don't think it's I don't think it was even feasible because the amount of people on social media wasn't, wasn't enough. enough. No, wasn't yeah, it wasn't enough. enough. Yeah. So I think there are a lot more eyeballs. And I'm talking if we say 20,000, so we're just using that as the top dog Scooby 10 years ago. It's and if we just judge by YouTube, it's at least 100 times bigger the entire market. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. Now, with that being said, there weren't as many people. There were some shitty channels that did succeed, right? Or or on Instagram. There are always going to be shitty channels that succeed, however. Yeah, and there always will be. So I will say that what has happened is people see money. Money is the temptation. It's actually not the subscribers. It's people realize that you could be a full-time, in quotations, influencer, whatever that means. Yeah. People want to enter that. And so it becomes oversaturated. And I do think that fitness or social media, in a way, certainly is oversaturated. You need – your competitive advantage is more important, but it can act as a great – a greater force multiplier. So if you got it, like uh, as an example for music, if Michael Jackson, the Michael Jackson of YouTube was to come out, he would still rise to be Michael Jackson. And he Jackson. might be sitting on the left of you. Yeah, yeah. So he might be right there. <laughs> I mean, I may have seen this individual do a moonwalk four or five times. <clears throat> a mean-ass moonwalk. Yeah, mean-ass moonwalk. Yeah, uh, from the streets moonwalk. So <laughs> I think it's multifaceted. I think we got to take a look at a, a lot of different variables. I think one that's interesting, as Mike mentioned, and you guys talked about, there's a lot more ways to succeed. So 10 years ago, there was no Instagram. Podcasting really wasn't a thing. Blog, so writing, that was a thing. So mm -hmm. writing and YouTube was in its infancy. Writing for fitness was the thing. Yeah. yeah, it really yeah blogs totally were the thing. Yeah. Uh, and there's still uh, some guys that put out some really good content. There's some older websites that put out some really trash content, but they're still yeah. viable now. Yeah, yeah so I, I think it's just one of those things where you got to take a look at what your intention is and my advice to everyone out there who's even remotely considering it is don't quit your day job i mean i i actually had a youtube yeah. channel for for four years before i quit i was doing strength classes predominantly for women because let's face it women are way better clients mike and myself have talked about this mm -hmm. off air yeah i mean not just from a smell standpoint honestly <laughs> but just adherence all those things right um 
And so I waited four years and I I was doing YouTube full time. When I say full time, I meant my intention was to do YouTube for about a year and a half of that before I pulled the trigger and quit my full time job. And so I think a lot of people, they guys like, I want to pursue my dream and they'll watch someone like, uh, and this is an insult to Gary Vee, but when he talks about like, oh, you just got to grind, like grind, grind it out. Well, you don't even know what the landscape's like. If I wanted to be a film director, I wouldn't just quit my job and then keep working on films and hope within a year I'm going to put out a masterpiece. You know, it's yeah. like anything else. There's skills that you need to learn. And so I think.